Recently I went through something you could call the dark night of the soul and in this video I'm just going to share my experience of what I went through, how it started, how I got through it and how it ended because I have people coming to me asking me questions about what's going on in, in their life when everything seems to collapse and they fall into meaninglessness. So let's start from the beginning. What is a dark night of the soul? Well, for me it's it's when your conceptual reality collapses. And what I mean by that is that everything that holds meaning doesn't hold meaning anymore. So if you, let's say you believe in God or you meditate or you're spiritual, whatever it is, suddenly you feel like it's meaningless and pointless. And everything else around you also seems to not be as important because it's like you get a blank slate of erasing everything in your life so you can see what's truly valuable. And that's what I would say the dark night is. It's a falling into meaninglessness, pointlessness, because nothing seems to hold value anymore because everything's up in the air. So you feel like you feel despair, you feel hopeless because you have nothing to grasp to grasp or hold on to in your mind. So it's it's a mental trip in a way and you can feel depressed and down and low energy and feel like you, you're stuck in this place forever, which you aren't, but we'll talk about that ju in just a second. So why does the dark night of the, the soul happen? Well, for me, it happened because I meditate a lot. I've been meditating for 15 years or more now. So it tends to happen to people that look inside or do personal development work. They challenge their beliefs or challenge, challenge themselves. And especially if they meditate. Because you're looking inside, you're breaking down what seems to be reality. These concepts and labels we have and how we view what life is and our perspective and our sunglasses and just views about life. So if you do a lot of work like this, if you meditate, then likely that is what brings on the dark night of the soul. And for some people, the dark night can be a few hours, a few days. And for others, it's a few weeks or months. And Or like for me, it was on and off for several years. So, how do you survive this? Now, before we get there, let me share what actually happened to me. So, it was a dark winter here in Finland, where I lived at the time and still live, as I'm recording this. And I suddenly started feeling like nothing held meaning. So, I went through the classic symptoms of depression, felt low energy and life felt meaningless and pointless. I didn't feel like working or sharing anything even though this is what I do. So I did the minimum I had to do with my website, with the work I do, but then I just couldn't do anything else or didn't want to. I just watched movies, relaxed and hoped that it would pass, but it didn't pass. Life just became more and more absurd because I was beginning to see that even meditating, even striving and doing all this spiritual work, self-development work was in a way fruit fruitless, hopeless, pointless. So I saw through all this striving and it didn't really make sense. And at one point I really understood that if people reach a stage as dark as what I went through, then I understand why you would go into eating or addiction or what have you. Because that place is it's painful because you don't have anything, 
anything to grasp onto. So if we, if we want to use the word ego, there's no comfort. There's nothing. And if you're willing to face it fully and kind of disappear into the nothingness, which doesn't really happen, but that's what your mind says, then it starts to become really interesting. So it went back and forth. Darkness, pointlessness, meaninglessness. I didn't know what was going on. And then I had the thought to take a look at a book I had, which was A Path with Heart by Jack Kornfield. And I didn't read it. And it's funny because that book has a chapter on the dark night of the soul. But what did happen was that it got me meditating again because I, I stopped meditating when this happened because I, I didn't want to do anything. So I began again. I began facing what was going on within me, the anguish, the intensity of emotions, even though those emotions were kind of like non-emotions. It was just emptiness and nothingness, but that in and of itself is an experience. So I began facing it and it began unraveling and I came up for air for a bit and things I shared what I went through, I wrote about it, and then after a while, I went back. And I had many of these cycles where I went back into it, I came out of it, and it just kept kept going back and forth. And a good analogy you could use is peeling the peeling of an onion. When I began, I had so much stuff that it was painful. But the more of those layers that peeled away, the more I began to relax. And it took many years for me. I'm a, I guess I'm a slow learner. So if you're going through this and it's taking time, notice that it's normal as long as you're facing what's going on. And if you're having difficulty with this, then find someone who's gone through this and someone who can help you. Now... After a while, I began researching, looking into this, and what is this? Because I had no idea it could be linked to meditation. I just thought I was depressed or going through something. And then I discovered that there is something where you go through these stages in meditation. And usually it's... What happens before is you, you reach a high, you feel amazing, maybe you feel like you're attracting everything and nothing can disturb you in life. So you go through these stages in meditation and then once you reach that high, you can suddenly come crashing down because you've reached, you've experienced the positive, then it's time to experience the negative, the darkness within you, all the anguish and all the desires and hurts and anger and everything that you've experienced or don't want experience. But the good news is, when you're willing to experience even the darkness, because I had, even though I felt bad, and I didn't want to face what I was experiencing, my mind was telling me, don't do this, it's not going to go well, and if I don't put in the work, if I don't push myself, I'll end up homeless, and bad things will happen. And eventually I just grew sick of that, and I said, okay, let, let the worst happen. If I become homeless, then so be it. And I simply opened up, for, uh, opened up to the emotion within me. Kind of like when you're swimming in the ocean and you're floating on the surface, you have to let go completely in order to float. And in a way, that's what I did. I opened up to the emotions and I just relaxed into them completely. And the more willing I was to do this, the more things began to shift and change. I saw my preconceived notions. I saw the grasping after things. So the way to survive this is to simply to, f is to 
be willing to face it, to face everything that's within you, no matter how intense it seems, because it, it is never what it seems. It's often our minds that tell a story that there's a dragon here and you shouldn't go poking at it. But there's no dragon. There's no, no poking, there's no story. There's just experiencing the emotions within you. So, on and off, I went back into meaninglessness and came up for air. And now I just, I feel very relaxed having gone through this. And looking back, even though it was the toughest thing I've experienced, I'm also extremely grateful for it because it helped me let go of so many things that I've held on to. And it, it's helped me relax, relax immensely because there are so many things I don't do today that I used to think I had to do. So the mistake you want to avoid is running away. Don't run away from, from this because this is an opportunity to face yourself, to face your inner demons. Because the more you can do that, the more you'll see that there's really nothing to be afraid of. So you don't, if you're a meditator, you don't want to stop that. Keep meditating, even though it seems like it'll never stop. Now a meditation technique you, want to look in, you may want to look into is Vipassana, which is noting, labeling what you're experiencing. So if you have a thought that you'll be homeless, maybe you, you can label that thought or image if you see yourself being homeless. Or if you're talking, you can label sound or thought and feeling, whatever's going on within you. So you can do a search for that. You'll find plenty about Vipassana, labeling, noting meditation. And don't be afraid to dive into the intensity because there is no nothing to be Nothing that's going to gobble you up and make you disappear. But you may still need or want to work with someone who's been through this. And I'm not saying it has to be... I'm not saying that's me because I'm not a meditation teacher. So you can find someone who you truly resonate with. So even though... It took a long time for me. It doesn't have to take such a long time for you. And also don't dismiss the fact that it may be depression or bipolar or whatever you're going through. So don't spiritualize what's happening because it could be something else. So that's my... experience. I was about to say brief... But it's a, it's, a, it's a brief explanation of a not-so-brief experience. And what I really wanted to say is that this isn't something to be afraid of, even though there may be a lot of fear and intensity that comes, that comes with the experience. But you can face it. You can experience it fully. You can relax into it, even though it can feel like your whole world is falling apart. Because that falling apart is the old world. And it has to happen so you can move into the next part of your life. Because all of that falling away leaves a vacuum and then something else takes its place, like everything in life. There's a, there are cycles of growth and cycles of destruction or contraction. And it doesn't feel good to go through your inner demons and to contract and to get rid of stuff. Because we've been, we live in a world where it's supposed to be all growth, all posit positivity, all success. But all of those things are possible because, because of their opposite. In order to succeed, you need to fail a lot. You need to make mistakes and you need to learn from those mistakes. And in order to keep growing as a human being, you need to shed your old skin and to move forward. 
to start the next chapter, you have to close the last one. You have to keep going and... Yeah. I don't know if there's any, anything else that comes up at this moment. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment. Send me a question and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them where appropriate. So if you're going through this, keep doing what you used to do. Relax into the emotions, don't be afraid of this, because this too will pass and you'll be fine, but it, it just feels like it won't pass, but like anything, it will. <laughs>